the decision became clear like we need to build a solution or find a solution that helps send these newsletters yeah and a lot of the cms's and different platforms at the time are all web-based because there weren't like newsletter first companies there was us there was like the hustle there was the scam and axios but most of the companies were blogs and media companies that were built on wordpress or whatever their own tech stack was yeah and so me being naive and dumb and young and 23 i go let's just build our own CMS where like, I already know what the writers want. I know how they compile the newsletter. I know the constituent parts. Give me three months and I'll just build this myself. And also just being so naive, I didn't map out like a PRD or like how I was going to build it. And so every day I'd wake up with the anxiety of like, this is like too good to be true. Like there has to be a road of roadblock at some point where I'm gonna hit a point where I can't build any further. And I just totally overlooked. And so I woke up with that anxiety every day for three months and just kept building. And eventually like we had a CMS that was entirely custom built for us. Yeah. Neil, our managing editor would go in, he'd like test it out. He'd copy and paste some stuff in, he'd move around the stories and then it outputted like a perfect HTML email. I was like, holy shit, we just built our own CMS that's custom for Morning Brew. It has our styling. Now, instead of Neil copy and pasting into HTML, he's like in a typical text editor. I pulled that out of my ass out of, I have no idea how I figured out how to build that in three months by myself. And it was just such like a cool, like I went to Austin. I was like, I think we should build our own CMS. And he's like, okay, I think that makes sense. Yeah, and I just spent three good. months doing it and then it worked. And then we had our own CMS and like would onboard new teammates. And like, as we hired from Vice, Vox, Condé Nast, whoever, they would come on and be like, this editor is better than the one I was using at Condé Nast. And I was like, that's so incredible that something I built without even knowing what I was doing. And again, like the chip on my shoulder, self-taught developer, now I'm building like production level software that a full team is using and I'm 24. And then that's what I do half the day. And then the other half of the day, Austin's like, can we spend $500,000 this month on paid acquisition on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat. And as a small team, I was like, I I'm creating in Photoshop, the different assets. I'm going and learning how to use Facebook ad manager, how to use Google ad manager, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. Yeah. I'm tracking the pixels. I'm making sure they're signing up. I'm seeing the conversion and I'm spending $500,000 a month as a, again, like as a 24 year old yeah. with like no one telling me like not to, or like, this is like what we should be testing. Yeah. And it was that environment of just having full buy-in from my higher ups, Alex and Austin for me taking complete ownership of like, I don't know what Facebook ad manager is, but I'm about to spend $300,000 on it. So I might as well watch yeah. YouTube videos and figure out how to be the best at that. And total, like just no red tape at all, just figuring it out. I love this so much. Was, was awesome. <laughs> I, I'm getting excited talking about it. Cause like, I don't know. I, I mean, even like we, we, we give a lot of autonomy at Beehive now. And like we have interns and people coming on and we give them total access. But the thought of me just being that young and having, and like we were growing, we were scaling the team from five to 15. We were becoming like a media organization that people depended on. And it was all built on like tech that I kind of was like, I think we can just build this ourselves. Yeah. And it just worked, was like an incredible learning experience for me and like just how the business world kind of worked. Uh, wow, there's, uh, there's so many lessons there. Let me just extract a couple and just kind of restate for if you miss it, it was kind of subtle, but like sometimes not knowing everything is the best situation to be in, to be like totally green newbie, like not know that what you're about to do is kind of insurmountable or never been done before or like super hard, but just be like, I don't know any better, so I'm just going to do it because that seems intuitive and the right decision to make. That's awesome. Um, and just the audacity in a good way to just like, despite maybe you felt like um, there's this uh, phrase called imposter syndrome, right? You get it when you're young, you get it when you're older, you can get it anytime. Um, but you just totally like, put that to the side and you're like, well, it seems like this is what we should do. This is what we need. This other system is clunky, ineffective. It's taking six hours to copy and paste. It's, it's BS. I've got a better way. And so you just 
you just build it like pure ignorance of not knowing any yeah. better and i also like i didn't have a traditional internship or a corporate job this was like my first ever job yeah and there was no strings there was no red tape it yeah, was like, is this okay for you? like you're looking around it was such like, like austin's like we are a hundred thousand subscribers let's get to two hundred thousand as fast as possible and i yeah. was like how much money do i have and what are there, is there any restrictions and he goes just grow the newsletter yeah you know what that is though too that's like to austin's credit that's vision that's leadership Right. Even, you know, again, maybe you didn't know any better, but like, that's the stuff right there. Cause like, I feel like, especially, I mean, Austin's very young at this time yeah. and to see what is traditionally done in a business with leaders, COOs who are running an org or a team, sometimes it's like heavy handed over indexing on reporting and numbers yeah. and report cards and estimates. And he, whether he meant to or not, was like, this is working. Let's just feed more of that and yeah. let Tyler run wild. Which like, so like for me to be in that situation, like it took the perfect mix of them having buy-in, them being distracted, doing other things, me being able to take a few bets and like them actually work out. I'm sure like if I spent three months on this text editor and it didn't work, then everything after I'd be like, hey, I think I need to spend three months building this. You'd be like, well, the last time we, we just paid you 25% of your salary to build something that didn't work. Yeah. And it was a total waste of time. So there's like a lot of luck too, and that things yeah. just happened to work out. And I think it just compounded with, we trusted him for two months to build this and it worked. Now he's making a case for X. Let's just double down and see what that does. Yeah, I, I, I buy that. I accept your luck thing, but like, what's that saying? Like luck is where like opportunity and preparation you know, intersect. Well, cause I say it as luck, but there was no, it not working. Right. Like if, if, and when that road bump came, there were, had to be a way to keep moving. Cause I couldn't possibly go back to Austin and Alex. Cause again, like I'm young and impressionable. And like, this is my first job and be like, if I'm doing the math, you just paid me 15 K for the past two months. And I just did wasted all of your time. Cause there's no workable product, which isn't possible yeah. or like reasonable. Yeah. So I was like, we're just going to figure this out one way or another. But I've also, what I've learned from this experience is also like how I lead now and the type of people I look out for. I care a lot less about where you went to school, what jobs you had, what titles you had previously. I love young or old, but typically they skew younger of just grit and like a passion. I'll over index on passion and like a desire to be like, I love Beehive, I've followed what you've done. I see the vision of what you're doing. I don't, I've never worked in a company like this or I haven't done this, but I know that I can make this work and I'll bet on those types of people who can show that they're willing to watch every YouTube tutorial on how to be the best Facebook ad manager user of all time. Cause a lot of these skills are teachable. What you can't teach is like the drive. Yeah. It's all teach. It's all teachable. It's all learnable. Everything all is. All of it. Yeah. So the, the things, the hard skills to learn are actually what I care less about. Yeah. It's the underlying person who shows that they are like, not only will I work Saturdays and Sundays, but like, I want to like, I, I'm choosing to not go to the park on Saturday because I'm so interested in how this like Facebook and Google ad engine works. And I think that there's optimizations to be had that all these other companies are missing. And I want to figure that out. And because I see that in myself. And so that's, I think, why I'm biased towards hiring those types of people. Because going all the way back to earlier, I didn't check the boxes of like getting a software job. I didn't check the boxes getting a engineering job. I barely got a consulting job after like getting turned down by everyone else. And so I, I stumbled into a role where the only thing I had was the ability to try harder than everyone else and figure out how things work and how I could provide value. And those are the people that get me really excited to join the team. Yeah. People who can figure stuff out and just get the result. Yeah. Yeah.